Hello and welcome to the Art Class Curator podcast. I am Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator and the Curated Connections Library. We're here to talk about teaching art with purpose and inspiration, from the daily delights of creativity to the messy mishaps that come with being a teacher. Whether you're driving home from school or cleaning up your classroom for the 15th time today, take a second, take a deep breath, relax those shoulders, and let's get started. Hello, everybody. It's Cindy Ingram from the Art Class Curator Podcast. And today, I, I want to kind of not vent, maybe vent. I'm not much of a venter, but I have a, a comment that someone had posted or a, a, it was not a comment, it was a post in the Art Class Curator Collective Facebook group. So it's an amazing Facebook group. If you'd like to join us, head over to artclasscurator. No, what am I talking about? Facebook.com slash group slash Art Class Curator Collective, I believe is the address. But you can also just search Art Class Curator Collective. Um, and we have been talking obviously a lot about black lives matter supporting how we support our students how we can become allies um where we can learn about privilege where we can learn how to help you know all of those things and so the post that this person posted basically she said that she said a lot of things um I'm not going to bring up all of them. Uh, but one of the things that she said is that basically, what does this have to do with teaching art? Uh, and that though, that wasn't the exact word I'm, words that she used, but it was like, I'm going to, let me open up the exact words here. It says, this group is supposed to be about art. So if you want to teach art of many cultures, way cool. To use this as another platform and once more bring our kiddos into this is appalling. Sorry, that I'm reading that exactly as it's written. And there's, there's more to it, but that was the beginning. So this group is supposed to be about art. And my first reaction was, this is art. This is about art. Because art is everything. Art is all of it. Art is everything. So when we... When we put art in a box, when we put art separate as this is art and this is real life, we're doing, we're doing art to disservice, we're doing ourselves a disservice because art is everything. Um, and I, I just wrote a bunch of words here, so I'm just gonna kind of take each word and talk about it. But Someone in the comments of that post, and I didn't save the comments, I, I deleted the post, <laughs> but um, someone in the comments had posted a picture of Guernica, and I thought that was a really good example, because if you think about Picasso, I mean, all his terrible character flaws aside, you know, most of his career was painting pictures of still lives, women, children, um, that sort of thing. And he did not do political art at all until the bombing of the town of Guernica. And, and, and he was so angered by that, that that led him to create his first political artwork. I don't know how old he was when he made that, but he had done, you know, a large portion of his career um, not being... Uh, responding to p political events. So it was made in 1937, and he was born... What time was Picasso born? This is another chance of you listening to me Google. Oh, he was born in 1881, so he was a good, like, 50-plus years at this point. That's an example of how the world moves us. The world moves us to create... It moves us to process and reflect and communicate and discuss. And art is a tool to do that. And so if we teach art as if it's this bubble of the elements and principles, of it's this bubble of technique, of it's this bubble of just pure, purely making something, 
we're missing out on so much. And our kids are missing out on so much. Our kids are capable of having deep, real conversations. And I know so many of us shy away from these sorts of conversations because we don't want flack from the principal, from the admin, from the parents. Oh, you're, you're putting your views on my child and all of that. But these conversations can be had without bringing politics into it, without bringing Democrat versus Republican into it. Because humanity and people and someone dying under the knee of someone else who is supposed to be helping, that's not a political issue. That is a human, human issue. And that is what we need to talk about. We need to talk about how we got here and how we can, and how we can change it. And we can do that through art. We can have, that art gives us an amazing way to connect and to teach and to educate and to discuss in a safe way. We we're talking about the art, but we we're talking about the bigger picture too. So all of this is art. Art also you know, helps us look at the world in different ways. It helps us see something from someone else's perspective and understand their perspective better. And that, that it's an ultimate way of connecting with someone and seeing something from their point of view. And it's easy to get trapped in our own mind and our own thoughts and our own experience of the world. And art allows us to see into another person's experience in a really powerful, powerful way. Uh, I, I've given this example probably a few times. You might have heard it. But I had a, when I was teaching community college, it was very early when I first started teaching. Um, I would do a, a non-Western cultures group project, which if you remember the Curated Connections Library, all the materials to do that project are in there. So um, just a little plug there. But, uh, you know, each group would be assigned a different culture from around the world. Well, they would be a, assigned a, time, or a a part of the world and they got to choose what culture or, you know, what, what culture it was, whether it was like something ancient or something, you know, a group now or, you know, anything like that. So anyway, they were, they were doing their presentations and I require, of course, I required them to lead a discussion or, or some sort of engaging activity with the with the class. So it was more than just a presentation. They actually had to engage the class in some way. This was right. So I started teaching community college in 2007. And so this was right around the same time as the Iraq war, um, you know, five years after 9-11. And Muslims were very much distrusted. And, you know, that's not over, but it was, it was big. And I live in Texas. And, um, so one of my students was was Muslim, and he wanted to, to do Islamic art as his presentation. So he and his group did a did a presentation on Islamic art, taught you know some of the main fundamentals, taught a little bit about the religion and how it came, where it came from, and all of that. And and then um, I always let the the class ask questions, and so what happened was. The, con- the discussion kept going. The-, the kids in the class took that as a wonderful opportunity to have someone to talk to and ask these questions that they had. And so there were boys in the class who really thought all Muslims were terrorists. And they, were- they would ask him, they were like, why? Why is that? What, you know, what? And so there was this back and forth that went on way longer than their presentation time. It was one of those Saturday morning three-hour classes. So we were scheduled to take our break. And I let some of them take a break, but I was like, you can keep having this conversation. Um, through the break if you want to and they did they just kept they kept talking about it and they were talking about it after and it was one of those it was probably one of the the highlights of my teaching career to see like that activity made some changes in some people in that classroom and think of the ripple effect of that throughout their lives you know that was about well, 15 years ago that can't be true yeah, 10, 10 to 10, or like 12 years ago. Holy cat. Okay, sorry. I just all of a sudden can't believe how old I am. Um, so anyway, like these conversations that start through art 
have give students the ability to have a place to talk about things, have a place to reflect and to think. And that's why we really harp on the idea of personal connection to art so much in what we do at our class curator is because we know the power that an artwork has to change you, to change your life, um, to make you see the world in a different way, to connect you with someone else in, an, in, a, in a really deep, meaningful way. When you see the art made by another culture, when you see the art made by another person who is different than you, it connects you to their humanity in ways that you you might not have connected. And that this goes for um, music that they make. It goes to videos. It goes to you know or performances. Any type of art connects you to a person in a way that is is so pure and so. Um, just deeply, d- deeply connected. So we can't say that this is not about art. If we were, if we were doing crafts and painting flowers and teaching about implied line and, and, and that's all we did, okay, that is, are you really teaching art at that point? Okay, well, that's when I'm going to start get, getting ranty there. Um, So that's what art is. It's everything. It gives, we talked about the humanity and the connection. It gives kids and people and adults a chance to to process. Through the looking at art, discussing art, gives you a chance to reflect and process. And through the making of art, gives you another chance to reflect and process. One of the first answers I always get in the aesthetics lessons that I do at the beginning of the semester is that art is expression. And I, I kind of sometimes disagree that not all art is expression, but it can be expression and it can be a way to process your feelings. And we've seen some really amazing things just in the coronavirus. Um, one of the, the people on my team, Jennifer Easterling, who's been on this podcast before, and she writes a lot of our lessons in the membership. She did our spark distance learning curriculum with her kids. And she wrote a lot of the projects in there. Um, well, I think she wrote all of the projects in there. Um, and she did those with her students. And one of them was a project inspired by Edward Munch's separation. So the artist who did the scream, he did a series of other paintings about like core human emotions. And um, this artwork, Separation, is one of my favorites. So the, her project was to assign them to do anything, anytime that they felt isolated or lonely or, or separated and that sort of thing. And, and then they had to create something in that vein in any, in, with any media because, you know, their kids are at home. They didn't have, we didn't know what they would have. So she shared with me some of their projects There's digital, there's photographs, there's all sorts of different things, but they're all so deep and so meaningful. And these kids were really connecting deeply with that feeling because they were separated. They were isolated um, in in their safer at home um, situations during the pandemic. So, you know, art gives us a chance to, to, to tell our stories to tell about our emotions, to process our emotions, to think about our emotions in such um, powerful, powerful ways. And so we need to do that through, um, through the Black Lives Matter movement. We, we need to be involved. We need to be actively anti-racist from the artworks we choose, the lesson, the lessons that we do, all of our interactions with our students and the community. Now is the time to make these changes. We need to, um, to not shy away from talking about it with our students um, because it is about art. It is. But I know that some of you, and, and this is, and I was in this situation, that some of you are, feel like you're not supported in that from your admins, and I really hope that this is, um, this changes with everything going on right now. Um, I was teaching during the um, 2016 election. And the day after Trump was elected, (laughs) I got a text message 
to all text message to all staff, all, all teachers that said, don't talk about this today with the kids. And I was like, oh, you never see me so mad. And I, I actually don't get mad that often, but like, I was so mad. Cause I was like, one, it's a his, it's a history. This is like a uh, civic action, a major presidential election. And you're telling me not to talk about it. Like that's a, that's weird. Um, first of all, but I think they were, you know, it was our students were I think 90% um, Latino. And then I think, I don't remember the rest of the percentages, but I think we had, you know, it was like, it was mostly um, Hispanic students or Latino students. So anyway, uh, that was hard. And I did, I did not follow that rule. I'm not really a rule follower sometimes. Like, if, if I don't agree with the rule, I won't follow it. So, anywho, that's a rant for another day. Um, so, I know you don't feel like you're supported in this. And that's a really good conversation to have with your teacher friends. And so, I, I recommend you joining our Art Class Curator Book Club. We're going to read um, For White Folks Who Teach in the Hood and the Rest of Y'all Too by... Mm, Christopher Emlin, I believe. I should have had his name offhand. I think that might be right. Yes, Emden, not Emlin. Um, we're having a meeting for that book club on June 24th. So that's only next week. So um, you might not have a time, but we're going to have a second one on July the 8th. So you can find out about that by visiting... Um, the Art Class Curator Book Club Facebook group. And also, if you're on our email lists, you should have gotten an email about that as well. Links to everything I mentioned today will also be in the show notes at artclasscurator.com slash 50. Thank you so much for listening to the Art Class Curator podcast. I will see you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Art Class Curator podcast. Help more art teachers find us by reviewing the podcast and recommending it to a friend. Do you have a work of art that changed your life? If so, send me your art story. You can send it to support at artclasscurator.com or leave a voicemail to 202-996-7972. Get more inspiration for teaching art with purpose by subscribing to our newsletter, Your Weekly Art Break. Recent topics include how to support English language learners, why we should teach artworks from Black artists even if it isn't February, and how to deal with teacher burnout. Subscribe at artclasscurator.com slash artbreak to receive six free art appreciation worksheets. Today's art quote comes from Marcel Duchamp, and he says, what art is, in reality, is this missing link not the links which exist. It's not what you see that is art. Art is the gap. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day.